In a couple of minutes, I'd like to introduce you to the young people themselves, but I'd like to tell you a little bit about the journey that got them here. Some of the, the doors that were opened to get the doors opened into this, uh, into this very room, to meet these incredible 20-year-olds who are changing the world. 20-year-olds who are changing the world. It's an impressive accolade. And over the last two days, I've been trying to think about who their, their, their peer competitors are. And I realized in here that actually they're competing against the internet. 20 years old and changing the world. And that's pretty tough competition. But as Google have already recognized, and I think you'll, be, uh, you'll, you'll also see when you meet them, that they're very much up to that challenge. Uh, my, the organization that brought them here, uh, I set up when I was in a similar age, early 20s, and believed that I could also save the world. Uh, I wasn't quite as clear or confident or clever as these young people. Uh, mine and Michelle's plan was to save the world via the power of marketing, which if that sounds... Uh, fairly unconvincing now. Imagine how it sounded when I had hair past my shoulders and was wearing flares. Um, but 10 years later, we now work with Google and several other of the biggest brands uh, in the world. And the real, the DNA that makes it successful, why we make social profit and financial profit, why we have harnessed the power and influence of brands to benefit young people's lives, I thought in the spirit of Zeitgeist, I would share with you today. I would open source the secret of our success and give you the piece of code, and it is this. We let young people into our office every day. From any walk of life and any background, exactly what's taken place here today happens in our office every day. And it was that that Amy Brown at Google, who's helped organize this event, spotted. And it was that she asked us to see if we could harness and capture, and if we could create a campaign together to bring some of the best, most brilliant brains of young people here to benefit the businesses that would be in the room. And that's what we did. A competition went out across YouTube and Google, and we had 60-second video entrance from Afghanistan to Brazil to Cape Town of incredible young people. It was a difficult mission to bring them board. The most difficult part was having to come in the office every day and see lots of videos from 21-year-olds who are just putting you to shame with what they've already achieved in their lives. But a judging panel selected the final 12, and I'm very, very pleased to be able to introduce you to some of them now. So, uh, Orly, Sadiq, please come forward. <laughs> right. To give you an idea of then what we and my team had to experience, we sat through 60-second incredibly impressive uh, uh, introductions to these young people, which I'm now going to ask you to reenact right now. Okay, um, my name is Sadiq Mir, I'm 24 years old, and I, my previous professional career was in industrial product design. However, I started, uh, well, I went on a volunteering placement in Latin America, and doing that just changed my mindset of the whole materialistic world. So, when I came back to the UK, I decided I wanted to work in the social sector and combine my creative skills. So, I created Future Voices International, a youth communication media school, enabling young people living in, in underprivileged communities a chance to be part of the digital age, as well as get their social issues expressed with the world. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Orly. Uh, hi, I'm Orly Seton, and I'm 23 years old. I come from Cape Town, South Africa. And in 2009, myself and five friends, we started Rethink Leadership. And what we do is we use dialogue as an effective tool to um, empower youth through um, and teach them leadership skills. So we work with high school learners um, in grades 11 and 12, 16 to 18, from all the demographics in uh, and the communities in Cape Town, as Cape Town is still very much segregated in rich, poor, black, white. Um, we do a camp where we bring them together. Um, basically, what, what the guys were speaking about before, not meeting someone before, you develop stereotypes, you develop hatred, um, even though not at such an extreme scale. They get to meet each other. And then we do a six-month follow-up program where they work together to develop leadership skills. So when they're at the point of making decisions, they still have that network of diverse support. Thank yeah. you. Ludwig. Awesome. Um, my name is Ludwig Marishani, 20 years old from South Africa, studying at un the University of Cape Town. Um, when I was 17 years old, I invented the world's first and only bath substituting lotion. You, it's a gel, you put it on, and then you don't need to bath. Um, I came up with this after using Google a lot because I didn't have access to a computer. I actually ended up typing my 8,000 word business plan on my Nokia 6234 cell phone. <laughs> and. After three years of hard work, we've gotten dry bath tested, approved, and it's ready to go to market. I've been talking to a lot of the charity guys here and airlines who are also looking into getting it on long haul flights and et cetera. And a big project that's close to my heart is that I'd like to start an entrepreneurship league. And to put it into perspective, we've got rugby leagues, soccer leagues, all these different types of leagues to develop excellent skill. Why is it that every economy complains about 
not having enough entrepreneurs, but they have no type of league or system that develops great entrepreneurs from a high school level. And that's the, the biggest project that I want to start working on next year after making Dry Bath a success first. I mean, I have to prove that I'm a great entrepreneur. Thank you. Thank you very, very much indeed.